the best and worst of Jigsaw. Whenever the 8th Saw movie was announced back in 2013, half of the Saw fan base was excited while the other half didn't care. After the disastrous film Saw 7 3D and Saw the final chapter, I really don't blame them. However, I was still excited that another Saw movie was in development, especially when it was revealed to be a direct continuation of the previous 7 films instead of it being a reboot of sorts. The producers did however mention that Saw 8 would go in a different direction. This meant that Saw 8 would feature something completely new that had not been done in a previous Saw movie which would make a stand out in comparison to the others. After the release of Jigsaw they had definitely remained true to their word. The working title for Jigsaw was actually Saw Legacy for a long time. Then I think it was before the release of the teaser trailer it was then announced that the new Saw movie would instead be called Jigsaw. Personally I feel that Saw Legacy would have been a much better title. Originally Saw 1 was going to be called Jigsaw in 2004 before they decided to just call it Saw instead, which I think we can all agree was definitely a better choice for the franchise. Jigsaw had its good and bad moments all throughout the film, but Jigsaw was a much better film than Saw 3D was. The Jigsaw film actually had a cohesive story and better structure than the previous installment had. This is most likely due to the fact that the producers spent the last several years developing the direction of the story that they wanted the film to go in. Then they hired screenwriters Josh Stilberg and Pete Goldfinger onto the project to pen the script. After the completion of the script, duo directors Michael and Peter Spirik were brought onto the project to direct the film. Jigsaw looks and feels completely different from the previous Saw movies. This comes down to the new cinematography and editing techniques that were added to the film. It doesn't have any of the 360 camera shots or flash frames and fast cutting in the editing either. Even though Kevin Grodert, who was the editor of the first five Saw movies and directed Saw 6 and was forced to direct Saw 7 3D, returned as the editor for Jigsaw. Producer Mark Burke strictly wanted Jigsaw to be shot and edited to where it felt like a song movie and to when it also didn't. He wanted Jigsaw to be its own picture that was similar to Saw but also had something new in order to reinvent the franchise. The reason behind those creative decisions that were added to Jigsaw was so that the film would not only appeal to the old Saw fans but in order to cater to the new fans to the franchise as well. This was a bold move to make. And believe it or not, the cinematography and filmmaking is crucial as it will either make or break a movie, as it will define the overall picture and tone of the film, as well as other aspects such as the music and editing styles too. Now, I didn't particularly hate Jigsaw. This was a fun film to watch, but there were many aspects of the film that left me disappointed. Jigsaw overall really just felt like a fan-made movie that was put together by people who worshipped the Saw franchise. But I believe, and so do many others, that this film could have been a lot better and could have given us so much more. It's almost as if they tried too hard to step away from the previous entries and bringing in something new to the franchise and then shoving it down our throats. While I was watching Jigsaw in the cinema for the first time, uh, some of the scenes such as the ones with Logan Nelson and Eleanor Bongo at the coroner's office, it, it just felt like I was watching an episode of CSI. I really didn't like how Amanda Young and Detective Mark Hoffman were never mentioned or referenced. The whole movie is spent with the police department trying to figure out who the new Jigsaw accomplice is. I actually can't believe they even tried to make it look like as if John Kramer and Jigsaw had actually returned from the dead. Seriously, supernatural elements don't belong in a Saw movie, they just don't work. The fact that the film actually tried to suggest that he could be alive when we all seen Jeff slit us through with a power saw in the third film and he had a proper autopsy carried out on his corpse and saw for by Dr. Hefner which includes his entire torso being cut open, stomach removed, his brain was taken from his skull. It felt cheap that they actually tried to pull that trick in the film. Now you get the idea that members of the press and public are probably worried that he might never have died. But it annoyed me that this theory in the film was forced and it's absolutely impossible. The last we've seen of Hoffman was when Dr. Lawrence Gordon locked him away in the bathroom after he murdered John Kramer's wife, Jill Tuck. It has not been entirely revealed if the police ever discovered the bathroom or not and found Detective Hoffman's corpse. Although there is a scene in Jigsaw when Detective Halloran discovers the Mitch lookalike corpse. There is a hacksaw placed on the shelf that strongly resembles the one that Dr. Lawrence Gordon had used to cut his foot off in the original saw. The last time we've seen the hacksaw was in Saw 3D when Detective Hoffman was chained to the pipe in the bathroom and he went to grab that hacksaw but Dr. Gordon took it away from him and chucked it out of the bathroom into the hallway so he couldn't cut his foot off and escape. The place that Detective Halloran and the SWAT team had found the Mitch lookalike and the hacksaw was actually Eleanor Bonville's workshop. She was somewhat of a fan of Jigsaw and in her spare time had rebuilt some of the traps that were featured in the previous movies. These replicates consisted of the reverse bear trap, the angel trap, the cube trap. So it's difficult to say if the actual hacksaw shown in Jigsaw is the original from the previous films. Dr. Gordon survived his ordeal with Jigsaw and most likely told the police and press that he had to cut off his own foot with a hacksaw. So that could be one reason why the hacksaw was at Eleanor's workshop. Logan could have easily gone back to the location of the bathroom and picked the hacksaw up while he was bringing the body to Eleanor's workshop in order to frame her as the new Jigsaw accomplice. Detective Falloran did mention that he knew 
She was a regular visitor on the website, Jigsaw Rulers, as well. The film does not confirm, nor does it deny that the bathroom belonged with Hoffman's corpse being discovered or not, and I think the writers wanted to keep this ambiguous. However, Sparrow from the Book of Saw appears that it might answer this question, and also based on what Josh Dolberg has posted on Twitter regarding the fatal attack of Hoffman and whether or not he'll be seen again in a future Saw movie. I was not one bit happy that Jigsaw reused a twist that had been used earlier in, in entering the franchise. The fact that it was revealed that the game taking place in the barn was not occurring in real time. That game had taken place 10 years prior to the events of the original Saw movie. I will say it was cool how they executed it in order to explain Logan Nelson's involvement with Jigsaw and the new games taking place. Apparently, in their words, this was to be some sort of easter egg reference to Saw 2. Don't get me wrong, I love easter eggs in films. It just felt cheap and a real cop out that the screenwriters couldn't think of anything better to write instead. It reminded me of how Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens was a carbon copy of Star Wars Episode 4 New Hope. Saw movies are known for their misdirection, twists and turns. Jigsaw was in development and they planned for several years before they got launching it into production. And this is what they came up with. It would have been better if Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton, who wrote the Saw 4 right through to Saw 3D, had it returned to Pen Jigsaw as well as Spiral. I'm sure they would have been able to come up with something fresh and new as they normally do. However, I can understand that they weren't brought back as they revealed after Saw 3D that they were crafting the seventh installment to be the last in the series. I don't think they are particularly interested in coming back to write another Saw movie. They are also focusing on new projects as well, so it may not be with their schedule to be able to come back to the franchise if they wanted to. At the end of Jigsaw, after Logan Nelson kills Detective Halloran, before he closes the door shut in the iconic Saw fashion, he states, I speak for the dead. In the previous Saw entries, John Kramer, Amanda Young, Detective Mark Hoffman and Dr. Gordon all say it gave over. I don't even expect the new Karen Sprout from the Book of Saw to say it gave over or I speak for the dead. It seems that these new disciples of Jigsaw simply have their own point of view of John Kramer's philosophy. While carrying out the same games and torture methods as John Kramer, they will also add their own touch to their games too. It seems to be the way that they are going with these new storylines and characters. The writers and directors stated that seeds were planted in Jigsaw that would set up a sequel to the film. Jigsaw 2, Saw 9, would then have been a direct sequel to Jigsaw and continue on with the storyline and characters set up from that film. Then Chris Rock came on board with his new idea and that completely changed the course of everything and it's the reason that we are getting Sparrow from the Brick of Saw instead, as it is not Jigsaw 2. I reckon one of the seeds that was planted in Jigsaw is that Logan Nelson had someone else set up the laser cutter trap. I don't believe that it was Logan Nelson who drew up Detective Hallorn for the final game. At the end of Jigsaw, during the flashback montage, John Kramer told Logan, we can never come from anger or from vengeance. Earlier in the film, Edgar Munson was killed off screen. The film never showed who it was, however it can only be guessed that it was Logan. Edgar Munson killed Logan's wife, but Detective Hallorn states that it never been proven. Whether Edgar Munson did it or not is unknown. It's possible that the secret accomplice could have been the one to kill Edgar. So it's up in the air whether Logan has chosen to follow through this or not. Detective Mark Hoffman made the same mistake and was punished for it as a result. The secret accomplice assisting Logan could in fact be Brad or Ryan who were involved with the love triangle trap from Saw 7 3D. During the commentary of Saw 7 3D, the writers and producers confirmed that it was them behind the masks when Dr. Gordon captured Hoffman and put him into the bathroom. However, the film chose not to reveal this, possibly due to pacing issues. At one point during Jigsaw's development stage, it was rumoured that John Core, who played Ryan in Saw 3D, was supposed to return in Jigsaw. It might have been the original plan to bring him back and have it confirmed that he was the one who helped Dr. Gore to catch Hoffman and also assist Logan during the events of Jigsaw. The production crew probably wants to retcon this and have a new character in a future Saw movie to be revealed as the secret accomplice. Screenwriter Josh Dolbrick has said that he is hoping in the future that another Saw film, perhaps Saw 10, would tie in both Jigsaw and Sparrow along with the other films. As of now, it's starting to look as if Spiral from the Book of Saw may have a sequel to it, being Spiral 2 or something. The Saw movies look like they are now going down the anthology route. We could end up having a set of sequels following the events of Jigsaw and another set of sequels following the events of Spiral. Then this can lead to the final Saw movie being trying to tie the events of the Jigsaw and Spiral sequels together. Or they could choose to make another Saw spin-off with a different title. For years there has also been rumours of a Saw television series spin-off. It could follow Jigsaw or again have its own new story and characters that are standalone. But set in the same universe as all the other Saw films are. I personally like this idea and hope they follow through with it. This is Saw and I love the Saw franchise with a passion. As long as they do it right, then I, along with the rest of the Saw families, will be very pleased with Laz Gate and Twisted Pictures. Spin-offs are now in the new sequels in the media industry these days. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Wash your hands.